Alrighty, g'day guys and welcome to the first Aussie Tech Review. I'm Alex from Gadget Games and uh, pretty excited to be bringing everyone this one today. It is of course the Silver Arrow TR4, an absolute beast of an air cooler for the Threadripper uh, TR4 socket that I've been having a crack at for the last day. Uh, and a bit so got this one built up yesterday and uh, it's it's a pretty interesting cooler before we dive into it though of course let's have a look at uh, what thermal right reckons we should be on the lookout for here on their website for the cooler they they do think that uh, the design's pretty good the top PCIe slot when you install the silver arrow TR4 does not get obstructed so I was able to whack my uh, 7970HD uh, back in the X399 Tai Chi back there. Works like a charm. I did have to bake it first so but look back onto the cooler. It is the highest rated air cooler for Threadripper. Uh, I believe over 300 watts TDP it's rated for and you can see why can't you. It is a, a beast of a cooler and has two big fan stacks, lots and lots of heat pipes and a massive heat sink as well. And of course the heat sink not blocking the PCIe slot, a big bonus. But look, overall the installation isn't too bad for this one either. Um, uh, you know, if you can put together the rest of a PC, you can put together the, the, the Silver Arrow TR4. So, uh, you know, they give you a nice screwdriver as well, which has a little, little bonus. Overall though, initial impressions, uh, before we dive into the benchmarks, I've got to say it works like a charm. It does the job it's advertised to do. You know, the ACCC won't be knocking on these guys' doors. Not that I bought it in Australia. It took eight weeks to get it from China, if anyone's wondering. Bit of a hassle. One thing to note with the Silver Arrow TR4 is you definitely want to be tweaking the BIOS uh, with some proper fan curves, you know, right out of the box, it spins to uh, it spins to the full 2,500 RPM, and it definitely gets a bit noisy. After you tweak it, though, you know you can barely lose any performance, as these benchmarks are going to show you, and uh, you can keep it to a level that's about the same as my old Hyper 212 Evo. So, why don't we go ahead look at some of those benchmarks? Okay, first up we have Limpack Extreme here. It's a new uh, stress test that's been optimized for reason. Uses more AVX instructions and you can shake a stick out. And as we can see here, very chilly temps across the board with the Silver Arrow TR4. Interesting though, the quiet fan profile, that was my optimized one around about 25 decibels, actually ended up getting more performance uh, than the max fan speed, which doesn't really make that much sense, but I guess uh, it was probably related to the fact that this benchmark, it doesn't boost as heavily as others because AVX, uh, it is an AVX heavy workload. Next up though, Enlighten here on Unity 2018.3, Enlighten Light Mapper did very well uh, under the quiet fan profile. Again, barely losing out any performance for about 25 decibels of, uh, of noise there from a fan, 25 to 30 I should say, whereas the maximum fan speed uh, profile, that's 45 decibels and uh, that one only gained a second. So it's not super well threaded, whereas the progressive light mapper here in Unity definitely is. As you can see, uh, some big gains between going from silent to maximum fan speed. So you can really see PBO uh, really kicking into gear on the 2950X. Once again, the quiet fan profile there only got up to 73 degrees and uh, was a good kind of middle ground between the three. And then last but not least, quick little test between the i7-3770K, my old rig, in fact, and the 2950X. As you can see, well, the i7, she's not really a big fan of uh, light mapping in Unity there. In light and all progressive, it doesn't matter what light mapper you use, uh, it struggled versus the 2950X there. I mean, look at that, what a ripper. Uh, six minutes and 15 seconds on Enlighten with Skype and a 1080p Twitch stream open. The i7 just can't compete. Alrighty, so guys, you can see, there we go. The benchmarks uh, show that this beauty is very capable of, uh, of cooling the Monster 2950X with 16 bloody cores. Tell you what, 
Uh, AMD going a bit crazy there with the core count. So they need to, uh, you know, let the competition catch up. But overall, very, very solid performance as we could see in those benchmarks right there. Uh, look, I'm pretty happy. Uh, with the performance, I should note as well, this was with Noctua and NTH1. Uh, Noctua's thermal paste, wh whichever one that was, um, you know, maybe you get a degree less with uh, Thermal Grizzly, uh, one of their ones, but it, they're, they're all pretty, pretty similar. I did use a lot of thermal paste on the application as well. Um, you know, enough so that a little bit did come out the sides. Thermal Wright's uh, method of, of uh, kind of recommending you apply the thermal paste, pretty interesting as well. It's uh, like a bit of a dot painting. Uh, but anyways, there you go. That's the Thermalrite Silver Arrow TR4 Black Edition. Uh, if you're looking at getting a Threadripper 2950X and you don't mind a little bit of noise when, uh, you know, when things start to heat up a little bit, I'm sure come summer, this one's going to be, uh, you know, a bit of a noisy one, but definitely gets the job done. So in my mind, if you can go for a water cooler like... Uh, you know, the NMAX or whatever that, uh, you know, yeah, you might get a couple of couple more degrees out of this one, or you can go for an air cooler with huge TDP that will basically let you hit the same PBO uh, kind of overclocks. Then in my mind, Thermal Right Silver Arrow TR4 it is absolutely the right choice for that one. She's a bloody ripper. And uh, yeah, that's, all I have to say. So guys, thank you very much for tuning into the first ever Aussie Tech Reviews here on the Gadget Games YouTube channel. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, cheers.